Coming up on this episode of Student DV, we play with colors, make balloon animals, and make fluffy slime. Stay tuned for all this and more on this episode of Student DV. of Student DV. My name is Aaliyah Evans and I'll be your host today. In this episode, we'll be exploring different kinds of arts and crafts. First up, we have some fun colors with Cynthia and Fabiola from Herman Lineback Elementary School. They're going to show us how to add colors to flowers using science. My name is Fabiola. And my name is Cynthia. And we're going to show you our experiment, add colors to flowers using science. The materials I need for the experiment are one white flower, a few small cups, food coloring of your choice, but for now we're going to be using blue and red, a pair of sharp scissors, and clean water. Step one, you pour the water in your small cups. in the water, we decide to use four cups, two are red and two are blue, but don't just add a few drops, add a lot till the water looks very dark, like black. Step three, use your sharp scissors to snip the last two inches of your flower. So this is how you want the bottom of your flower to look like. Step four, you put the two last cut inches from the flower into the bottle. But for now, we will wait till the next day to see the color changes in the leaves. So this is the end of the first day. Bye, see you next time. After a few days, you want your flower to look like this. Can't decide between red roses or white? Well, now you don't have to, thanks to science. Next, we have Amari Gums, who's going to be showing us how to stitch a straight line on a sewing machine. My video is about how to sew a straight line on a sewing machine, basically techniques and ways how to sew a straight line. I hope people, like, they don't have to have a sewing machine or if they're not, if they're not coming to the video to learn how to sew, I just hope that they learn something from it, like how to sew, but like just, I want them to feel like, ooh, I want to do this. My name is Amari Mae Gums, and you clicked on the right video, because today I'm going to teach you how to sew a straight line on a sewing machine. The materials that you're going to need is fabric and, of course, your sewing machine. For this demonstration, I'm going to specifically use a light piece of fabric and a dark piece of thread, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing. The machine is already set up and ready to go, so let's get started. For the process of sewing, you need to be very careful because there's a sharp needle and a very hot lamp. 
other thing to make sure of, when you're sewing, make sure you don't go towards you. Go away from you, because if you go towards you, you'll either break the machine or your thread will be caught, and that's not what you want to do. It will be caught in a, the biggest knot ever, and you might have to thread your bobbin again, which will take a long process, and that is not what you want to do at all. So right here is the knob in the back of the sewing machine. Make sure you turn it left and not right. This right here controls the position of the needles. What the knob does, if you turn it left, it situates the needle to press down on your piece of fabric. That's what you need to do to hold it in place. There's a gray lever up here. What you need to do is press it down, and this is the second thing that holds it in place. Now, to start sewing, you need to hold your fabric by putting one hand here and one hand at the end. So you could hold it like this as the needle is passing through. Start off by making a seam. Flip it over to this side and let's get ready to sew. You can see a very straight line. Right here is what the finished product looks like. In my next video, I'm going to teach you how to set up the machine and everything. But thanks for watching my video. See you next time. Bye! Did you see how fast that needle was going? Sewing sure takes some practice. Good thing the next activity is much easier to do. We will be making a color symphony. But first, let's hear from student producer Lolisa Safin. What happens in a video is me and my friends doing an experiment or demonstration. My job was to um, actually do like break apart the food coloring in the milk so it makes a nice color. I hope people can do this at home. My name is Simran. Hi, my name is Lily. And my name is Lolissa. Today we'll be showing an experiment called Color Symphony. First, you'll need a cookie tray, food coloring, dish soap, and whole milk. If you use low-fat milk, it will not work for this experiment. First, mm -hmm. you pour the milk into the tray so it covers the bottom. Next, add six to eight drops of food coloring on the milk. about five drops of dish soap onto the liquid food coloring and wash the shell. To clean up, simply pour the colored milk into the drain. How exactly does it work, you may ask? Well, let me explain. So the main job of the dish soap is for it to go after fat and break it down. But did you know that fat is also in whole milk? As it breaks down the fat in the milk, the color spreads apart. Wow, check out the shapes they make. It really is a symphony of color. But don't put those colors away just yet. The students at Herman Lineback Elementary are going to show us how to make blobs in a bottle. Hi, my name is Alasia. Hi, my name is Shashira. And we will be doing blobs in a bottle. You'll be needing a water bottle, a water bottle, three foot cup of water, a funnel, and alcohol seltzer. You will also be needing a flashlight, a vegetable oil, and food coloring. Any choice of food coloring. The first step is pouring the water into a bottle. Oh, three fourth cup of water. The second step is to pour the vegetable oil into the water bottle until it's almost full.
the seltzer tablet inside the bowl. And the food coloring is gonna in its place. If you want to keep the effect going, you can put another half tablet into the bottle. Okay. And for a real lava lamp, um, for a real lava lamp, add a flashlight to the bottom. science experiment. I'm definitely trying that one when I get home. The next activity isn't exactly an experiment, but it's still pretty cool. We're going to learn how to decorate cards with watercolors. So today we're going to be showing you how to make a watercolor decorated card. It's very easy to make and we have a stamp on it and then you can open it up and write whatever you would like. So these are the materials that you're going to need. So first, what we have is some paint brushes. We have a small brush, and we also have a medium-sized brush and a large brush. You can pick whatever size brush you would like, though. Then you're also going to need paint, watercolored paint. So we have vibrant colors, and we also have glitter paints, watercolor paints. So yeah, it's just glitter. And the final one that we have is a metallic paint, metallic watercolors. But any of these are optional. You can pick whichever one you'd like to use for your card. Then you'll need a cup of water to dip your paint brushes in. You'll also need some scissors to cut the watercolor paper. Then you're gonna need watercolor paper, white watercolor paper. And then we have a clipboard. Use the clipboard to tape down your card. And paper towels to clean up afterwards. Then we have some clear gloss. This is optional, you can use whatever you'd like. And again, the paper towels for cleanup. So first, what we did is we cut the card nine by five, by about four and a half inches. So you're just gonna cut that. You can do it however much you like. Though. So you just take your card. Then what you're gonna do is we're gonna take the card onto the clipboard. So you just tape the paper to the clipboard with painter's tape. Just tear a couple of pieces and you just put it on each end. So the right end and then we have the left end. So just tear another piece and you just rip it and put it on to the paper. Then now you're going to want to grab your water and all of your other materials. So we have the paint. So for this demonstration, we're going for a more sunset tone. So we're going to use the reds and oranges and yellows. So this is the three colors that we picked. The red, orange, and yellow. For a sunset tone, as I said before. What we also have is we're going to use the metallic colors too. So for that we have the red and the orange and the yellow metallic. That's what we used for this demonstration. So now you're just going to want to start painting. So first you're going to dip your brush into the water to make sure your brush is moist and then you're going to want to dip it in your paint. You start with the darkest color first 
so the quality is much much better so you just dip it in the paint and just start brushing painting you can do little circular motions if you would like start from the bottom and then you can work your way up to the top so you just keep painting it remember to start with the darkest color And you're going to keep dipping your brush to, to make sure your paint does not dry up. You don't want it to dry up while you're making this. So you're just going to keep dipping in the water and then you can go up when you're ready to. After you're done towards the bottom. And you're just going to do strokes, long strokes. With your brush from top to bottom. Or bottom to top, whatever you'd like. And you're just going to keep brushing and painting with your brush. And this is the final product. We just added a stamp and yeah. So hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. You know what I've always wanted to try? Tying balloon animals. It looks difficult, but the possibilities are endless. Let's watch as Lonnie Thompson shows us how to make a balloon dog. Pretty much I started it off with by introducing like um, how life can be kind of dull and boring. And then I brought how how you can enjoy more if you know how like like hobbies and, and so forth like that so then i so then i teach how to do the basic like the dog the viewers should definitely learn how to begin the beginning process of tying say a dog and then learn because it's similar steps no matter what you're trying to tie so then and so they should learn how to learn from a dog into like a sword or any other animal are you bored and don't know what to do with your life? Well, have no fear, Balloon Tying is here! Just look at how much fun he's having! But first... You must learn the basics like the dog. Step one, blow up your balloon and tie it. But only blow it up three-fourths away. Step two, squeeze and stretch your balloon. Step three, twist about one to two inches and hold to create the nose. Step four, twist two bubbles about two to three inches long and tie them into the nose. And now, your ears. Step five, to create the neck, twist about a one to two inch bubble and hold. 
Step six, similar to step four, create two bubbles about two to three inches and twist them into the neck. And now you have legs. Step seven, twist a long bubble about four to five inches and hold to create the body. Step eight, similar to steps four and six with your free hand, twist two bubbles about two to three inches. Then twist into the body. The remaining air dub balloon will be the tail. And now you can present your brand new dog to the world. Unfortunately, balloons make too much noise. But I think Mia Porto has a solution to this problem, and she calls it fluffy slime. Let's check it out. In the video, we explain how slime helps students that are fidgety in class, and it's a, it is a silent option for students to, um, silent ob option for students to make slime in class. You will need crafts, glue, shaving cream, contact solution, whatever food coloring you would like, a bowl, and a spatula to mix your ingredients. Start by pouring your bottle of glue into the bowl. Then add three squirts of shaving cream. Add 10 squirts of contact solution into your mixture. Now mix together the ingredients. Add two squirts of food dye into the mixture. You may now start using your hands to get the slime to the right consistency. Finally, your slime should look like this. Now you can make slime in every color for your family and friends. It's a map of California using salt dough. Uh, salt dough is basically just flour, salt, and water mixed together. I want people to learn about regions in California. Hi, my name is Jennifer. My name is Ruthie. And my name's Jana. And we're gonna show you how to make California Salto relief maps. You will need a California map with the four regions the desert, central valley, mountains, and the coastal. The ingredients are one cup of iodized salt, two cups of flour, and three fourths cups of water. First, put the ingredients in a large mixing bowl. You can use a spoon to mix the dough, or you can use your hands. You also might want gloves. It's totally optional. Now we put the dough on the map. Let it dry for a day or two. You can do any color for the regions, but they can't all be the same color. When you're done painting the regions the way you like it, let it dry for a day. And there you have it, your very own California Salto Relief Map. How about them salt crystals? <sighs> really, Ricky? Bye, see you later. That's all the time we have for you today. If you'd like to see more student videos, you can always check out our website at secctv.org. And make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm Aaliyah Evans. Thanks for watching. Thank you.